The True Story Behind the Blind Side If you're online film folklore or just an Oscar competition lover, then you've heard more than once about the Blind Side film, one which has not only been on the Oscar nominations but also won one of the awards. The Blind Side documents the exclusive story of Michael O'Hare, whose story began when he was 16. From the film storyline, we can deduce that he went from staying with a substance abuse mother to becoming one of the celebrated football players in the American League in a span of a few years. While the show got some aspects right, it also brought some intel wrong, and there's a significant reason as to why Michael himself doesn't like the show. Keep watching to understand and learn more behind the real scenes and secrets about The Blind Side and all the variations between the show and the real story. For the sake of viewers and new online guests, welcome to our channel. Michael O'Hare tells a whole different story about The Blind Side. The film made more than $300 million at the box office. The 2009 movie starred Quentin as a lead actor portraying Michael or Big Mike, a high school student at one of the elementary schools in the Christian called Briarcrest was rescued from a drug addiction mother and poverty and taken to Lee Chewy or Bullock and Chewy, Sean or Tim McGraw. After this extensive turn of events, Big Mike became a hot cake on a college prospect for football and wound up playing in one of the significant NFL teams, the Ravens. Though much research online and other related aspects pin the story and the plot based on the 2006 book, The Blind Side, on an evolution of the whole game by the great Michael Lewis, which was directed and written by Hancock Lee, made a lot of money in its supreme time. It's estimated that the movie made more than $300 million at the initial box office, and from this, Bullock won an award and a Globe Award for the role. It was not that simple for Michael to join or enroll in high school. Just like any other black or person of color in the block or in the new lands, Michael had some spotty academic story. However, somehow the trainer at the Briarcrest applied some religion to convince his friends and colleagues to let in young men to join the institution. At first, teachers and trainers were not impressed by Michael's general performance and his silent approach. However, before he matches in, he realizes that he was not as challenged and not as dumb as they thought. In real life, the trainer, Cotton, played by the screen name of McKinnon, didn't persuade the administrators to allow Michael into the training room, but the school principal decided that O'Hare should undergo several months of training and homeschooling before he could be fit to attend and join high school. Sean did not notice Michael at a volleyball game. In the show, Tui Sean meets Michael for the first time as a result of his younger daughter Colin's games. In this set, Sean notices Michael picking up an abandoned plastic and popcorn bags in the stands. Tui approaches the energetic man and introduces himself. And to the movie plot, this is the last time they'll ever see each other until the year's Thanksgiving. But in real life, Tui heard about the stories of Michael through his young daughter, and that promoted Tui to try and meet this young person, and from this setting, he was able to create a lunch extension for Michael to ensure that he had all it takes to have him have all the meals every day. It's even brought to our attention that Michael's personal welfare and general well-being were a huge concern for Sean from day one. The show surrounds itself with aspects that they both never met, and it's because of personal approach that led them to meeting. But the truth is, Sean knew about Michael and he always wished and planned on how he'll meet and introduce himself. Lee did not invite Michael to stay at their house so quickly. In the movie, we saw being introduced on the set where Chewie saw Michael walking on the other side of the road and it was raining, and the young guy was wandering around the cold nights in a t-shirt and a pair of shorts. Anne was so concerned and disturbed by his situation that she immediately offered him to come and spend the night in his home. In reality, Sean did meet Michael on a path during a normal Thanksgiving break, but it was morning hours and Anne didn't even concern herself or persuade him to join in their house. Lee did drive to school later that fateful day and took the young guy shopping for some decent clothes. It's also true from Michael himself that the Tuies were not the first foster family he'd stayed with. His mother had some substance abuse and on more than one occasion he found himself moving from one foster home to another. 
An interview with Michael confirmed that he didn't elect to stay with Sean until some months after he met them on Thanksgiving. He said he lived with a town mechanic, Henderson, or Big Tony, for some time, and also he had some history with more than five families when his trainer found out he was homeless. Sean told 2020, and we quote, Mike could stay here for some time, and then he'd leave, and then he seemed happier always to wish to stay. Michael himself said, When I met and moved in with Ann and his family, I felt loved for the first time, and the feeling of being one of the family filled me in other homes. It didn't feel like being part of them. It didn't feel like they were ready for me. I was a stranger there, but with Sean, I was home and everyone wanted me there. Michael was not timid. In the movie, Michael is not that aggressive, and some say that he's quite timid. Ann had to build and inspire the young guy, always to practice and play by telling him his club was like a home that he should embrace and protect. But in real life, he knew how important and aggressive, and in some instances, the SJ, who was only eight years old when he met Michael, confirmed that he was not responsible for training him how to play the game. Michael also confirmed in an interview that he had the passion and the fire for the game, and he gave all he had on the field. He also adds that aggression is not a system that you can add to someone, but a key extension within a person. He concludes by saying it's impossible to make someone aggressive, so for the show giving him a non-aggressive nature was wrong. He said that he has all the aggression and toughness that the game required. Collins switched classes to help his new friend Michael with his classwork. Collins recalls that his friends were so open and ready to help Michael. He adds that they were so sweet to him all the time, along with helping him adjust to a new school. In fact, we quote that Collins, on more than one occasion, offered more support to his brother Michael than is presented on screen. He was a full-time student who had to readjust his learning schedule to assist Michael. The movie doesn't feature some events where she even transferred into different classes so that he could help with some questions and assignments. She also adds that during this time, she did a lot of studying to help with homework and other tasks assigned to Michael. Michael was so happy to graduate from high school and join college. In an exclusive interview with multiple sources online, Michael confirms that he was so happy to graduate from high school. He says, I was so happy and I can still recall it was unbelievable just to start and walk across all the stages and shake the president's hand. I was the first ever of my kind to do such a thing and it was the best and great experience. He opted to join Ole Miss because it was his new home's only choice. Michael later explained that he figured out it would be wise and easier for his new family to come over and see him play. Michael did not write the White Wall essay. In the show, a tutor reads an essay by O'Hare. In actuality, Michael penned the task during his senior year. The exhibition presents its plot in a way that shows that Michael wrote the essay, which had some race aspects on his life because the article says, I look and all I see is white everywhere, even the walls are white. To my surprise, the floors are also white. And a lot of white friends, the tutor, are not aware that I have the whole idea of anything they're saying or teaching. I'm just standing in a white section. Michael, in the essay, continues to depict the teachers on how he doesn't like them because of the homework and the tasks they keep giving him. He also confirms that he's never done any homework in his life. All he does is the typical human aspects of eating and bathroom, where he looks at the mirror and talks to himself about going somewhere else. As much as the movie introduces us to how strong Michael was in terms of writing, Michael himself confirms that he was never in his life written anything like an assignment, and all he thinks about is getting somewhere else away from the school. But Michael's happiness when he finishes school is not that he's achieved a lot, but the tasks he's avoided in the end. Lee's family was racist. The issues of race are brushed all over the show and mentioned only occasionally in the White Wall essay and some other sense. In one scene, a family taunts Michael during a game. Race is not an issue in the Sean home until Chewie confesses that it's awkward and strange for him to have a Negro son before having a full Democrat as an acquaintance. The plot points out that Chewie was raised in a racist home. She's not even sure when and how her perspective about the general idea of race variation. However, at some point, the issue of color lines blur. She also confirmed that I married a guy who doesn't even know his color. 
it's from these aspects that Michael found it easy to match and fit in Lee's home because of their broad idea about the general idea of race. Michael also confirmed that color was not a problem to him, he'd gone through a lot, and the race was the only and last thing to worry him.